consciously tell God thank you for all the miracles, for all the signs, for all the wonders that we have received from God. Go ahead and thank him for the testimonies. Let God tell, let God know your thanksgiving. Of God. Let him know the gratitude from your heart. Let him hear your voice of gratitude. Tell him thank you. Thank you for all the things you have done in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Lord, we ask that this service be a very unique one. Let the answer to his name. Enjoy supernatural favor. Let everyone enjoy your favor. In Jesus' mighty name. He says, shall end this year well. A crowned the year with what? And that part shall drop. Fatness. Lord, crown my year with your goodness. Let my part drop with fatness according to your word. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Are you speaking to God sincerely? Crown my year with your goodness. Let my part drop with fatness. Are you talking to God from your heart? Grant my year with your goodness. Let my path drop with fatness. Are you really talking to God or you are just murmuring? Declare it over your life. Blessed be God forever. In Jesus' most wonderful name. God will make sure that scripture is fulfilled in your life. As you have declared it as it will be. In the name of Jesus. Today being a special day of favor or misfortune has ended in your life. Near success syndrome will never be your portion. In the name of Jesus. God speaks to us this morning. Let your word come with power. Let life trans- be transmitted through your word. Encapsulate everyone with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. Let someone expecting God to bring a change say. Amen. You may be seated. Give me a big hand. <laughs> Enjoying supernatural favor. God did not create you to suffer. He created you and I to enjoy life. In John 10.10, 10, the B path, he said, I'm come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. That's the King James. But the Amplified Classic, he said, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till overflows. He said, I came. I do what? Jesus is the one speaking. So life is for enjoyment, according to the Bible. He said he has made all things for us to enjoy. 1 Timothy 6 verse 17, the last part of it. When he said to enjoy, you are simply saying to take delight or derive pleasure in something. Glory to God. The word supernatural simply means something beyond the natural. Favor a special treatment or preferential treatment given to someone. Preferential treatment given to what? Someone. Is divine partiality. Okay, how will you talk about Jacob and Esau? Jacob was favored. True? A joint supernatural favor is special treatment given to a child of God through the application of the word of God in order to derive utmost pleasure in every area of life. Supernatural favor is real and is available to all. It's not something that comes to you because of how you look or your personality or your background. It comes to you if you know what to do. 
May favor change someone's story right now. A lifetime of labor is not equal to a one day of favor. Israel labored for 4, 30 years. They had nothing to show for it. But one day of favor from God terminated their labors. May that day be today to you. Many of you don't know the story of Israel. They labored and labored for 4, 30 what? That you're working hard does not mean you get more results. If no favor. If you know what? Peter toiled, fished, nothing to show for it. Jesus came. Have you not seen people work very hard? And the things are harder. In Exodus chapter 12 and verse 40, he said, Now the sojourning of the tribe of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 400 and what? 30 years. They were slaves for 430 years. For what? Nothing to show for it. Then in 35 and 36. And the tribe of Israel did according to the word of Moses and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold and raiment. Look at 36 carefully. And the Lord gave the people what? Favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So that they lend unto them some things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. Right now I speak over someone's life who has been toiling for years. Today we mark the end of you toiling in the name of Jesus. Favor will take over labor. That amen is for you. I said favor will take over your labor. In the kingdom of God, we have favor union. In the world, they have labor union. I don't belong to labor union. I belong to favor union. In the world is what? The best person to describe the two is Peter. Peter toiled all night. That is labor union. When Jesus met him, he gave him direction. He caught fishes. That is what? Favor union. Which one do you belong to? Okay. If you watch labor union, they must agitate before the salary will increase. True? They say, we'll go and strike. We'll cause trouble. We'll burn down buildings. Then I increase small. But the one of favor, you don't even struggle. Just Today, they will approve your paper. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. In the first service, we looked at what to do to enjoy supernatural favor. And I mentioned three things in the first service. I said, you must be born again, be a kingdom promoter, and then I said, increase in knowledge. That's the first service. Now, in this second service, what to do to enjoy supernatural favor? Number one, which is second service, which is supposed to be number four, but I don't want to go that way. Be diligent. Be what? Be diligent. Be what? It's supposed to be number four, but just write number one so you don't get confused. Be diligent. Be a worker if you want to enjoy favor. God uses what you do as a child of God. He uses it as a channel to grant you favor. He said, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalm 1 verse 3. So if you do nothing, there's nothing God will bless to prosper you. It said, the soul of the sluggard desired, Proverbs 13 verse 4, and have nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. So here, avoid idleness. Idleness is a major roadblock to the flow of favor. The reason many are not favored is because they are doing nothing. So there's no flow of favor. God has nothing to use as a point of contact. No channel. Made today, I do not stop in someone's life in the name of Jesus. If your idol do something, no matter how small. So I hear. Number two. If you want favor, be a person of excellence. Be a person of what? I'm going to tell you a practical thing that will shock you. 
Many of us, the level of mediocrity is too high. It's what? We use church to cover truth. Do you know, the moment I said John 10.10, 10, I saw mediocrity. I don't want to tell you. I have quoted from last Thursday, the Book of Spirit Empowerment. I've been using 10.10 10 to preach. How many of you were here to the Book of Spirit Empowerment? Now, knowing full well that I've been quoting 10.10, 10, the man in the studio will remove the A part. Because I've been quoting the scripture from the beginning. Till now, they are still putting the A part to confuse people. Somebody has settled for what? I've been quoting John 10.10 10 from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So by now, the person John 10.10 10 amplified, he will know where I'm going to. And I arrange it, the B part. But has kept the thief comment still till now. You don't get what I'm talking about. Excellence is doing a common thing or commonly well. It is going beyond average and at performing the expectation of others. That's it. It is ascending higher than the set standard. Two young men came back yesterday and when we returned, I was in my library with them. I was really tired because I've overworked myself these few days. And I saw one of them was busy typing questions and answers for what was it when the service um, time out for Jesus. I said, are you okay in your head? We are talking about Service of tomorrow, you are here typing. He said, I want to give you a question. I saw mediocrity. I almost slapped him. I was so angry. Just held myself because you can't beat an adult like that. If I was a baby, I would say, come on, get out of this place. That is, you are seeing me that I'm already exhausted to work with me for today's service. You are busy typing a uh, question and answer. High level mediocrity. If his office, Saka started. And I told him, I said, look, next time I see, in fact, it's on his way out even. I won't use him. Because I, every time I walk with me, I keep shouting. But that one is improving heat. He has not refused to improve. When you are a mediocre, you stress people. Any worker who believes in mediocrity, you will talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. This is why you did not tell me. You brought me suit, I will tell you to bring shoe. So I wear slippers with suit. <laughs> if you brought me suit, you should also ask me, you should know the shoe I should wear. I, and I said, I did not have to bring suit. I, I did not have to bring tie. Are you okay, your head? Don't want to employ you for. Never stay on the same spot. Always improve daily. Always what? To enjoy favor, you must keep improving on, your, on yourself. Because every small improvement makes things better and brings you closer to success and favor. Give attention to details in everything you do and excellence will come. Be a person of excellence and not excuses. We live in a world where people say, I didn't do because, I didn't do because. Stop giving what? Excuses. Raise the bar to perform better. Excellence attracts favor. There's no man or woman of excellence that you beg for favor. Because excellence prospers. In the absence of excuses. Men and women of excellence don't give room to mediocrity. They don't give room to gossips or side talks. They don't give room to... Now listen. Do you know if you're excellent, you will never gossip in your office. You will not like side talks. You will lobby. 
your, your excellence will just put you there. You will lobby. Check every schema. People will lobby. They don't excel in their career or in their jobs. Men of excellence don't go to say we are loyal. The, the boss will know you, just know it. And he can't do without you. Are you hearing me? Check people who gossip. Even in church here, they have nothing to offer. If you see any Christian who talks too much, you know everything in church, they have nothing to offer. Daniel excelled. Where did you read in the Bible that Daniel was wasting time with other people? Joseph excelled. They had no time for people. Excellent people just do their job and mind their business. So I hear. And favor just comes to them. Are you going to sit down? You may hate them, but they still excel. Look at the man Daniel in Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the president and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. Are you getting me? Daniel chapter 1, verse 20. In all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king acquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers they were in all of them. They were ten times what? May you, they, the spirit of excellence distinguish you. Excellence has the ability to announce you. Work smarter, work better, work harder, be more creative, provide the best value in whatever you do, you won't beg. When you are unique in your way of doing things, you attract on common favor. Shout hallelujah. Autograph every of your work with the touch of what? There are things I can't be telling you. I try to get you to detail. When I when you see me on the altar, it's as if I just go. I told them I said, remove you don't connect. Don't put it on the announcement anymore. But they still put it. Because the other connect is not they didn't do any work. I said, remove it. Don't be okay. Yada connect, yada connect. What are we connecting when you are not performing it? I said, pull it up. When you when you work on it, you bring it out. But they still put it. One mediocre has refused to change. Oh no. Church people. Stop blaming the devil. The devil is not your problem. There's so much mediocrity in the body of Christ. The devil is not problem. If we excel, sinners can't beat us. You judge us. Go to your office. Stop lobbying up and down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Do the work better than others. Your boss can sack you when he wants to talk. He says, please call. There are people, every boss like calling. They are the ones who have something to offer. He said, every time, he will not call me. He likes calling this one. You know, it's a lie. You don't know what to do. Not nature has one. When somebody knows what to do, you're the, you the boss. You, it's that person you always want to call. Because that person will talk. I have workers around me. I know what I'm talking about. They train you. When they work with you, they will train everything inside you. Bring me this. They bring. Did you not carry it, sir? I forgot. Sorry, next time. A job you have been doing for years, you are telling me you forgot? You say, hates me. Nobody hates you. You are stupid. They don't like my face. It is a lie. Nobody hates you. They don't hate smart people. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Excel, you see. Look, young ladies. Don't use your buttons to look for men. Excel. What did I say? Have something here. A man will value you. Every woman has the buttons you have. So if that is the only thing, you are useless. Excel here. No man can joke with a woman that has something here. Please listen. Sit up, young ladies in churches. Sit up. There's so much mediocrity in the body of Christ. Every woman of excellence, no, even your husband, make sure you're of value to him. That man can't toy with you. You sit with him, you're talking market talk with your husband. You know, I said, this woman, I don't want to converse with her. I'm tired. I'm tired. Including men, oh, there are men who are so Holy, we're talking about land in the Kuri land. The wife said, I'm tired though. 
church people, this is my husband. I can't discuss with him. Our discussion is only land. That they sold three plus of land. The family is trying to drag the land. That's what he, he come last week, land. This week, land. I'm, 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 I'm tired. When I talk to Ramo, she came from work with a sharp break. You are discussing two plus of land that is causing family trouble. Ramo, cruise you. <laughs> the one that they could is a, a tribe in River State. Amen. Excellence attracts favor. It attracts what? Of promotion and lifting. May you excel. It's and Daniel had what? An excellent spirit. Now be baptized with the spirit of excellence. When I became pastor, I took time to, to look. I said, No, I won't do this the way people do this. There are churches you go, they have opening time, no closing time. They have time to open, they, they say split lease. People are just tired. Somebody will take testimony, he said, praise the Lord. Then someone will shout out, hallelujah. Three songs for testimony. The man will preach, no time to stop. He said, no, today, I have to tell you the whole Bible. You can't read the Bible for one day. He said, the time given to me is short. That language is wrong. Any pastor you see so does not have excellence. He said, they gave me a short time. Whatever time they give to you, you go within that time. You can't finish the Bible in one day. He said, I was given a short time. No, no, no time. Prosperity now, for instance, you can't finish prosperity in one year. So if they give you 20 minutes, pray the one you pray for 20 minutes and get out. No, say, no. If not for time, I would have preached more. He has no spirit of excellence. Let me tell you something. Can I land you see me preach? My wife is a witness. They've never given me a topic a day before. It's in the night that you see me preach the following morning. I didn't see me preach. It's in the night. Bishop will call me. David, come. Tomorrow we are taking second session. Sometimes by 12 midnight. So I will now come on the altar. Do you know this message? I didn't prepare well because Bishop. Gave <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bishop gave me yesterday very late. So, have you ever had me say, one day we were, we, were, we were preparing for a message by 2 a.m.? He called back and said, David, cancel that one. I'm giving you another one. 2 a.m. And I'm to preach by the morning. And we're starting the first session by 5 a.m. He said, um, change it. You go for this one. 2 a.m. So I had to prepare a message in less than two hours because I must bait and prepare. That I did not, I did not sleep at all. But I, then I go to the altar. Do you see me like someone said, listen, oh, this message, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> People of excellence don't give excuses. They don't give what? Excuse the sign that you're a mediocre. Anytime it gives me, I just go and I, I must perform. And God has somehow has helped me to perform. Every message you see me preach, no one has been given to me for 28 hours, 24 hours. It's just towards the evening. It will tell you big topic. How you will preach it, only you and God. In a program like Shiloh, as big as that program, you go and I tell them, I'm preaching now, you know, I would have preached well if Papa has given me like a week. It's on the altar. It's a get up. Go and take charge. As you're sitting down, you just tap it. On the altar, something you take charge. He said, Tell him to go and take charge. He said, Tell David, tap it, David. Tell him to go up. You get up, you just, you'll be talking. You just have to talk. <laughs> that means something must be inside you. Uh, you just say, Tell him, tell him, get up. He will point to me. He said, Tell him he want to go. There and then you get up and you will show any sign that you are there. You just go praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> so how you have to perform. People of excellence prepare. Now, hindrance to supernatural favor. Hindrance to what? Hindrance to supernatural favor. In this service, the number one hindrance is pride. 
is what? In the other services, sorry, in the first service, <laughs> in the first service, I said the major hindrance to it is lack of gratitude, but this service is what? Pride. In James 4 6, he said, God resisted the proud, but gave it grace unto the humble, the people. But the God of grace, therefore, he said, God resisted the proud. First Peter 5 5, God resisted the proud and gave it grace to the what? Let me say this to you. Many don't know Esther was not supposed to be the first king, queen. Sorry, There was a woman called Vashti. In Esther chapter 1, look at it. Esther chapter 1, 12, 17, and 19. And I'll read Esther 2, 14, and 17. But the queen Vashti refused to come. Look at it. Let's read together. I want to go. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore, was the king very rough and his anger burned in him. But this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto what? So that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. The king was convinced that since a queen has behaved like this, that means every other woman will follow suit. King said, come out. She said, I'm not coming. What was her problem? Pride. 19 for time's sake. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes that it be not at all that Vashti come no more before King Hazarus and let the king give her royal estate. What? That's better than she. And chapter 2. And in the evening she went and on the morrow she returned to the second house of the woman to the custody of what? To the next verse. And the king loved who? Esther was not in the book before. Above all the women. And she obtained what? And is more than all the virgins so that she, he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of her. It was somebody's crown she now took. What was the problem? Pride. You know why many young ladies are not married? No favor? Pride. A young man came to you, even if you don't marry him, you look at him from his head to his toe. If not for church. If not for church. So you look at me. You. <laughs> the man said, okay. Oh. Then when tomorrow God leaves him, he said, no. That time I know God will lift you. <laughs> I have been a victim of it, so I can tell you. Don't look down on any man that has Christ in him. Always pray that God open your eyes to see the potentials in a man. People are proud. Though. Even men. Many people where they are where they are because of pride. You give them something to do, they say, No. No. I have masters. With my masters, I can't do this. And the man you are talking to is somebody who will recommend you to somebody. One of the wealthiest men that is a member of this church, quiet, except disappointed, came to this church through his driver. It's not on the loud side. He said, the driver came to church. They go to churches and anywhere they go, they put him in front. They put him in front. The driver now told him that do you want to really serve God, sir? Go to salvation missus. Nobody will put him in front. First come, first serve. He said, my driver recommended this church to me. He said, just go anywhere like you see. Nobody has time for you. He said, that's how he came to this church. Because everywhere you go, they want to push him as he has more money. He said, he came to some church, nobody had time, he just sit anywhere. He said, what? But okay, if the usher not despise the driver, I said, you, go this way, go this way, go this way. Yes. You want favor? Be humble. Be what? Pride is a destroyer. Many of us are very arrogant. Very what? 
you look down on everybody. You look down on, okay, who are you? Who are you? Whoever talks is a now, now, now. Do you know me? I know you. <laughs> and we know you. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Pride has nothing to do with the money. There are poor people who are very proud. <laughs> Pride is a lifestyle. There are very poor people who are very proud. Even food you give to them, you regret giving them food. Um, even the way they look at my wife and I was on the plane. One man was coming. He said, Oh, we didn't greet that man. No. You see the, the steps the man was taking. You see the pride from his step. I said, I will greet him. Don't you see that I saw the pride? You said, No, that's so he said, I took to my husband, you go greet him. If that, that is even with his movement. You see, poverty, yet he was moving like this. <laughs> he said, My husband, I thought you greet that man. I said, Me greet him. So I saw the pride. He said, Okay. You see pride, it overflow to the, you know, pride overflow from inside to outside. That is, with, the way it was entered the aircraft, you will see the heavy pride. And it was wearing uh, rubber, whatever shoe that you wear. As if you have money, this rubber shoe you wear to enter plane. Tell me who can favor that kind of person. You can't favor him. You'll even be afraid to favor him. And you want to marry? Humble yourself. Humble what? What? I, I shared something. I said, the reason why Isaac got a good wife was humility. When the servant of Abraham got to the well, he said, wait, but the young lady, Rebecca, came and fetched water for a servant to drink. For the camels, he said, this is the real woman. If it's today, <laughs> You will, you will say, driver, uh, give him anything you like. He said, driver. Forget that the driver is who will recommend you to his boss. He says, I want to really marry. Uh, get one girl for church. He has seen how you tell, call him sir as a driver. But when you see his boss, he says, yes, sir. When you see the driver, he says, sit down here, sit down here, sit down here. Say, if you don't want to sit down, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. You have been usher for five years, no husband. Something's wrong. You are not serving God well. If you inquire, you don't marry. You are usher, you don't marry. You are in a, what do you call what is, uh, CC1, CC5. Um, you don't marry. Something is wrong. You cannot be in that kind of public stand and nobody sees you. You have a character problem. You have a. No excuse, you have a character problem. Usher, who is ushering everybody, both poor and rich, to the church, and then nobody tells you, I will marry you. No, something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. You are telling everybody, enter, enter. Both good and bad, everybody see you, enter. <laughs> then nobody say, I will marry. Something's wrong with you. Stop blaming the devil. No demon is covering you. The one is covering you is your pride. If you do it, you tell them to enter, you see the pride. You say, oh, sit here. <laughs> when you see the ones who have money, you say, okay, go front. <laughs> then when you see the poor ones, you say, which front? Sit here. Shout hallelujah. I told some, some people, I said, for you to walk in a public place and no husband, <laughs> your case is a special case. <laughs> what spiritual favor can do? Let me tell you. Both men, oh, both men, all the women are rejecting you. <laughs> Something's wrong with you. Every woman you talk to say no. <laughs> Yet you have a good job. You are working in the bank and nobody wants to marry you. Thank you. How can you be a bank manager? No man agrees. Then you have a problem. You have a what? Your pride is too high. It's like work with the National Directorate Bank. Even the way you're talking to the woman, you say, if I marry this, you go keep me up. <laughs> say here. Yeah. Please remove their bank anger. What supernatural favor can what? How many of you want to go to land by favor? Want to get land by favor? Do you know you don't get land by savings, you get land by favor. Now, as I'm speaking, a miracle will happen. In Psalm 44, number one, they, 
Favor can give you landed properties. Favor can give you what? They got not the land in possession with their own soul, neither did their own arm save them. But the right hand and the arm and the light of the counter because that's what favor unto them. How many of you believe that? If you don't believe, look at the Alabama property. Is it by favor? Now sold me by the anointed of today. The next landed properties shall come by favor. Now, any time you buy land, favor is not involved. God is not involved. Every time you buy land, the first sign of favor is that you get the land by favor. It doesn't necessarily mean it will be free, but there will be some... T- a man of God was talking to me, a great man of God. He said, David, when you come, I will show you where God gave me favor by land. Because I'm going to that city and we spoke three days ago. He said, they gave me a land of two point something billion for 150 million. So David, I'm going to show you the land, and this is the favor of God. He said, the best I should pay, I should not bring any money. I said, no, no, I won't do that. Let me just give you. He said, bring 150 for a land of two point something billion. He said, I'm going to take you to the land. Now I decree over someone. I speak with authority. You get landed properties by favor. I declare in the name of Jesus. Landed property will come to you by favor. Amen. Number two, what people can do, it can restore what the enemy has stolen. What the enemy has what? For 430 years, Satan deprived them of their benefits. Nezor 321, he said, I'll give this people in the sight of the Jesus that it shall come to pass when you go, it shall not go empty. Now I declare and I declare. Somebody no matter how long Satan stole things that belong to you, they'll be released right now. Favor will bring about restoration. Rise to your feet, open your oil. I decree favor will bring about restoration. Are you saying amen if you believe that? If you say amen, let your amen be strong. I say favor will bring about restoration. Whatever you have lost since we are born, favor will restore it. I said, whatever you have lost since you were born, favor will restore it. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the comforter, the restorer. I decree by his power on that oil as you anoint yourself after now, favor will be released. Amen. Everything you have lost since you were born will return back to you. Amen. The louder your amen, you have it. Amen. The Spirit of God rest upon that oil from this moment in the name of Jesus. I hear God. I hear God. And God said to me, somebody who have lost a child, now write it down if I hear God. You will take in and you have children. Yeah. You had a miscarriage. And he said to me, it will not going to give you one. No, he won't give you one. I heard God. What he says to one, he says to one, whatever you have lost will be restored. Yeah. He said, through thy favor, thou shalt stand out. Psalm 30 verse 7. I decree no matter the cloud, you will stand out. He said, that's made my mountain to stand strong, means to stand out. Let millions of people gather. It is you that they will pick. In the name of Jesus. He said, that will bless the righteous with the come out with a shield. Now, because you are born again, I decree favor to encompass in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen. If you think favor does not work, look at this man. Even when I go for a program, you will see that I am the one single out. The whole, let one million, have you ever noticed it? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, if I go for a program, it's only me that Constantly will be the center of attraction. Let everybody gather. Favor is real. The move, move, move to me. To me. Say favor. favor. I'm not the only person there. Now I declare. Let one billion people gather where you are. Favor will single you out. Favor. After this anointing. Anywhere your name is mentioned, it will attract favor. 
He said, Thou art highly favored. Whatever will make you to be distinguished by this anointing, it will come upon you in the name of Jesus. He said, The time to favor you has come. Somebody's appointment will be this week. They will send for you from high quarters. In the name of Jesus. He said, Even the kings shall entreat thy favor. Psalm 45, verse 12. Now I decree, he said, they shall fall upon themselves. The people you would have looked for, they will look for you. The people you would have said, how can I meet him? This week they will send for you. In Psalm 106 verse 4, hear what the Bible says. The Bible declares, remember me, O Lord, with thy what? When God remembers with favor, forget it, life will turn. Today, God remember your favor. Yeah. When? Yeah. When God remembered Sarah, her frustration ended. When God remembered Hannah, her frustration ended. When God remembered Joseph, his prison ended. Everything contrary to redemption that you are suffering from, it has ended today. Yeah. Today's favor will terminate every frustration in your life. Yeah. If you believe it, say amen. Let me say this with authority. Every darkness based on Genesis chapter 1, as this oil touches your forehead, darkness will be rolled away from you. Amen. The glory of God will envelop you as a favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I declare to be so. Amen. Everything that will make you to become who you are supposed to be will answer to you. Amen. Now take a little as in the name of Jesus. Let favor of God answer to me. As I'm anointed, whatever I open my mouth to say, God will confirm it. And whatever God's son have said will also be confirmed in my favor. Now the things I have said, and this you will say, all will come to pass. And not just say I begin to pray for you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray for yourself. Policies will change. Open your mind and pray. Jesus, mighty name, it is done.
When you wake up in the morning, anoint yourself and start as step out. Favor follows me. Please, don't use your fingers on the chairs. We notice that after anointing services, you see fingerprints on chairs. Please avoid that. Use your handkerchief to clean your hands. If you don't have a handkerchief, clean it on your body or your hands, but don't put it on the chairs, please. Don't put your hands like this on the chairs with the oil. You're staining the chair. Are you hearing me now? That's not good. Nobody does that in his own house. This is my white chair. Don't stain it. When you go to church, you can stain church. Church owned should not be stained. Stain your own house. Cheers. Yeah, if you like, go when you go home, pour the oil on your chair. But here, please avoid pouring oil. But hear this. The beginning point of favor is salvation. Is what? He said the righteous. <laughs> As I just said that, mark my words. You hear somebody testify, somebody is delivered from dead. As I just stood here now. He said, for this sake, someone will rescue from dead. In the name of Jesus. The greatest the starting point for favor is salvation. Is what? You must be born again. All those who are not born again, after they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, until the prodigal son returned, he was not restored. You must return back to God. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've come to you. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose to save me. With my mouth, I declare you my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. If you offer that prayers, keep standing while others take their seats.